scaling a business is not just about organizing the business, it's also about If you are a freelancer and you describe yourself as an entrepreneur, there is a question you need to ask yourself. You can be a lifestyler with 5k, 10k, 20k a month in your pocket. Empire Builder need definitely more energy and more money. Stop selling time and selling value instead of time. Stop selling skills and selling value instead of skills. Hi guys, so we keep going with our little scale talks today with Jérôme. Hi Jérôme. Hi guys, pleasure to have you again. Pleasure always. And we're going to be talking today about entrepreneurs, about mindset, entrepreneurial mindset, about what it means to be an entrepreneur and about how you can scale the way you think about being an entrepreneur, which is a very big topic. Because scaling a business is not just about organizing the business, it's also about scaling the way you are. Now, why is it relevant? Why is it important? We talk to a lot of entrepreneurs and we see various sorts of entrepreneurs and they interact in different um, circles. Some of them are going to be solo entrepreneurs. Some of them are going to be um, entrepreneurs who lead companies with 500, 1,000 people and they think very differently. They act very differently. They decide very differently. And understanding that kind of process, the decision-making process, the uh, behaving, the behavioral process is extremely important if you want to get your business to the next level. And there is a trap. The trap is that we also talk to a lot of freelancers and those freelancers, when you meet them, say, what do you do? And they say, I'm an entrepreneur. The point is we deliberately exclude freelancers from those typology of entrepreneurs and we're going to explain why. But before we do that, let's ask Jérôme a question. What is your definition of an entrepreneur? <laughs> That's a good question and I was not ready for that, but I like it. Um, For me, as an, an entrepreneur, uh, you are a person that wants to create value, uh, bringing value on the market, uh, wishing, of course, to make money, but bringing value on the market uh, in a way that solves a real problem. But it requires you to be an entrepreneur, uh, being able to adapt, being able to be proactive. So it's more and it's actually the subject, you said it, it's more a way of uh, developing a certain mindset that allows you to have the shoulder to do whatever uh, ID, project and uh, solution you want to bring to the market. So it requires you to be and it requires you skills to do. So the entrepreneur is all of that. That's a good point. Um, and the reality is when we, when we do the, the, the Scale Talks podcasts, Um, it's a definition that keeps coming back when, when I say, when I ask people, whatever the level, right? Um, but usually they're quite high up in the hierarchy of entrepreneurs and they're scaling with, with a few hundred people in their teams. And it's a constant kind of answer. What is it to you to be an entrepreneur? It's, um, it's not a question of falling in love with the solution. It's a question of sol falling in love with the problem and having a mission. And that mission is to solve that problem for people. And then we build the company and then we build the team and then we put into place whatever is needed to solve that problem. But they start with, let's solve a problem, let's build value. Now, we were talking earlier about different types of entrepreneurs. There are four types of entrepreneurs. They've been documented um, in a book. That book is pretty old one, so I'm not reinventing the wheel, right? That book was the e-myth for the entrepreneurial myth. And it was written by a guy called Michael Gerber. So you can find it on Amazon or wherever you want. However, that um, description only has three key uh, profiles of entrepreneurs. So we've added another one. Basically, technicians, managers, entrepreneurs, which is supposed to be the, the third level. And we're adding another one, which is the leaders because it's the actual level that comes after that once you've managed to do the rest or once you start thinking differently. The first one is the technician. You want to start with it? Yeah. When we speak about technicians, it's a level why um, and why it's a type of entrepreneur. It's a person that brings a solution to someone, but, uh, you know, <laughs> it's kind of fully pragmatic. 
I know how to uh, pour water in a glass. So I will just sell my ability to pour water in a glass. Done. I'm a technician. I know how to do that. And I bring the solution. As simple as that. That works for a few things. I sell flowers. I'm good at selling flowers. I build websites. I'm good at building websites. Very good at building websites. Mm. I um, do consulting. I solve problems for whoever. And then I move to the next one. The problem with those jobs is that they are just what I said. They are jobs. They are not about entrepreneurships. They are about doing something. They are about um, being on your own, not having a boss, having your own time, sort of, the idea that you can manage your own time. But usually when you speak to those people and you say, okay, why did you become an entrepreneur in the first place? The answer is going to be because I don't want to have a boss. Exactly. And the fact is, in the end, they don't have a boss, but they are their own boss. And in that situation of being a technician, whatever you sell, as you explain, flowers, websites, you sell a skill that is needed, that can have a high price or not, but you sell it with your own time. And as a technician, you are the person that is selling his time. So that's why you said it's a job, actually. It's a job and it has the limitations of a job. If you have a job and you are paid by someone to do nine five, you are a technician because you are good at what you're doing. You don't want your boss to tell you how to do it. Um, you just feel like, you know, just, just give me a break. Let me do my stuff. It's five o'clock and going home. Right. And so when you're a technician entrepreneur, that's kind of that logic, except you're not going to stop at five o'clock because you have to keep working. So technically you're not even going to sleep at night because you keep, you, you need to keep delivering. So it is the same as being an employee for someone, but it's worse than that because you have to do whatever it takes to, on top of that, pay the bills, look for new clients, manage the tax, manage the tax, manage the tax, manage the tax office because you didn't pay what you had to pay, etc., etc. So you have all the worst aspects of not yeah. being an employee. Mm. Now, if we move to the next stage, the next stage is not the technician, it's the manager. And typically it's the technician who has a wake up call and says, you know what, I'm done doing that bullshit. I'm going to find someone who can do it and I'm going to supervise. So delegate. Delegate. Call it a supervisor or manager, whatever you want. It's the next stage of the entrepreneur who is starting to delegate, starting to move things. What they miss is the vision. What they miss is in five years, I'm going to be over there. In five years, I'm not going to be just managing my project now. In five years, my business is a platform. It's a conglomerate. It's in different cities. It's larger than me, and it's not about me at all. It's not about my project at all. It's about building a structure that is going to keep growing and that is going to be working for me, not the other way around. That's where you, you start having that click and that big difference between the technician who is doing, the manager who is supervising, and the third category with the, the entrepreneur, and the entrepreneur gets at the level where they start anticipating and dreaming big. Yeah, and before to get to that point, mainly you will see people that have agencies, that have, you know, that kind of situation where they choose to delegate at the beginning with low cost, and then they begin to stretch a little more, so they begin to, to have real skilled people, and, um, you know, they are most of the time in a dilemma at this situation. And that's what I wanted to add to that discussion because you have four types of entrepreneur, but next to that, you have intentions of people. <laughs> and when you are at that scale of uh, manager, so you develop your mindset to get to that point where uh, you develop a business and that business uh, can be run by other people and you get to manage them. Most of the time people think do I want, do I wish to spend more time in my business and scale or do I wish to stay in that level? And most of the time that's where the, the idea begins to come. But then, as you said, they come into the entrepreneur phase and that's where they structure things and they begin to understand how they can structure a, uh, a company that will slowly but surely put the entrepreneur himself out of that company because it don't need to be there anymore. That's scaling actually. 
Yeah, it's a um, it's a mix of having the right mindset, being able to play with time slash stop selling time and selling value instead of time, stop selling skills and selling value instead of skills and time, and it's a question of structuring. But we said four types, right? And so far we've just explained three. Yeah. Um, technician, manager, and then the switch to entrepreneur. But there is the next one, and the next one is the leader. And the leader logic is very interesting. It's very important because it's the stage where technically you're getting out of your business and you have structured that business so that it really works for you. And what you do is contribute, but you stopped working into the business. You're supervising things from overseeing things from very high up. And the point here is to say, okay, we become leaders as in we talk about whatever vision we have. We talk about whatever values the company has. We talk about the stakes. We talk about the life-changing aspect of what the business is working on. If we have a business that is about um, decarbonizing the atmosphere, we stop doing the daily ins and outs of managing a team. We become advocates. We travel the world, Ambassador. which is pretty bad for the CO2 <laughs> targets, everything, but the, the word is out. Our job becomes to talk about how important it is to find solutions for this. We become, as you said, ambassadors. And being a leader in that situation is definitely giving to the world your vision. And you don't give only to the world, you also give it by doing that to your team. And because your team see you in that podium in that situation, they do think uh, you are someone amazing and you drive them by your position of leader because you're showing that you do the job, you're showing that you push that company forward and you bring that company that employees are proud to be on. And because of that, people just tend to wish to look like you. And because of that, the employees themselves, when you get to that position of leaders, we will, they will definitely want you to succeed even more. Yeah. So they will give their time and energy to make their leader, the person that leads that company and that project and that vision to have even more success. And that's where the shift between a team that is making the job and a team that is starving to success for the company they are working with begin. And that vision of a leader makes a really big difference in, a, in internally and of course externally also for the growth. There is a test that you can do and actually that test is um, all working around one word. That word is impact. And that idea that I'm talking about is exactly why we call the company Impactified uh, actually. The point is to say if you don't think about the impact you want to make. If you think as a technician, you're just here to do shit. I'm saying that because you don't imagine how many clients of mine, when I say, what do you do on a daily basis? They say, we do shit. And I'm like, you realize that it's not really a good way to sell what you're saying. And they say, no, but we have clients who need shit done. So we do shit. Okay. Technicians, the managers, they're not seeing the impact yet. They're just trying to organize things and making, make sure that things work so they can deliver on a result to their boss, right? They're the boss, but they're not thinking ahead beyond that. The entrepreneurs, they are at the stage where they want things to pay. They want the business to start working. They want to play golf, sailing, spend time with kids, and they need the business to start working on their own. The leaders, they want to see an impact. They want to make sure that they can change something. You take whoever is around you, right? You take the guy who created ChatGPT. He's talking about the impact of AI constantly. That's why people think this guy is a leader in his field. Um, you take Bill Gates. He created um, Apple. Hmm. Of course, not Apple. Microsoft, right? Just trying to see if they're following, but you know. Um, he created Microsoft. Is he still the CEO of Microsoft? No. But the fortune he made with that went into a foundation. And so he is perceived as a leader in his industry because he's pushing the agenda forward and saying that money is used for something, right? And the point about why the test is the impact is that if you just 
start doing um, a graph on a piece of paper, you're going to realize that the model without talking about impact is linear. The more effort you put, the more result you get. So the growth curve that you're going to have is not a curve, it's going to be a line. However, as soon as you start thinking in, term of, in terms of impact, you are going to create not a linear line. Exponential path. But you're going to get an exponential hockey stick, right? The problem with the line is that to get more results, you need to, to work more. As soon as you stop working, the line goes, it down. goes down. It breaks the line. But the point with impact is that at some point, because you're creating that vision for people, they are taking that vision that is yours as themselves. So if you say, I'm creating a company that is going to save the planet. Okay, that's a big, big. Um, I'm going to create a company that shelters dogs, right? They're in the street. We build a business model. We sell whatever and we give them home. Okay, so any people who works in that company are passionate about dogs. So they're going to make it their own vision to come and work. Need more time? Doesn't, doesn't matter because these guys are there to, to, to care about the dogs. And even if they have to work until seven instead of five, because they're in an environment that they love, they will do it. And they are going to push your message. You won't have to pay for advertising for that. They will talk about it. And as long as they believe in the action you're trying to put, as long as they want to make that impact that you have in mind, they are going to be the ambassadors on a daily basis. And that's where the, um, the, the impact um, logic becomes a hockey stick and that's where you start making a difference. But to get there, you need to have the right mindset and you need to start thinking very carefully about how you're going to build a value and how you're going to structure things, which is possible in the higher levels of that kind of mindset, but doesn't exist in the early levels. And I really relate that uh, uh, what you said, especially to what I said a little earlier. I said when you are in between manager and entrepreneur, you begin to develop that uh, question of where do I am in that situation? Do I want to get involved or not? And I call that um, two vision of entrepreneur. Some people uh, want to be entrepreneur and as the leader want to create an empire and they are, I call them empire builders. And some people don't care about create that kind of empire or vision or whatever. They just want to have the lifestyle and have the freedom to do whatever they want. And in my opinion, uh, I want to relate that because you have to think what is your own situation? Are you getting to that point of leader because you are an empire builder? And then, as you said, you have to think, structure, organize stuff so that it's ready to be, uh, to bring that vision to the market. Or are you just a lifestyler and you won't be the one that will be <laughs> just grinding so much to get to that position of a leader in your company, in your uh, vision? And you just want to have an asset that works and you just rest. So it's really important for you to think about that because being a lifestyler and being an emperor builder is way different. And the fact is you can be a lifestyler with 5K, 10K, 20K a month in your pocket and emperor builder need definitely more energy and more money to get your vision to a certain point. So the turnover to get that possible needs to be way more higher than, of course, a lifestyle that will be enough with a billion, with a million, sorry, dollar business a year. So it's really a question you have to ask yourself because that situation of scaling up a company, once you are in, you, you don't want that to be ruined by yourself. So you don't want to yourself stop your growth because in the end it's not exactly where you want to go. So you have to be clear on that one, but sometimes, unfortunately, we just know by doing it. So be straight uh, to yourself if you want to be an empire builder of lifestyle and adapt on that process to develop your mindset so that you get to a point where being a leader is truly what you want to do in scaling your business. The word asset here is very interesting, uh, very important to me. When we describe what we do, we talk about the outcome, the transformation about what we do when we coach a CEO, when we coach an entrepreneur or their teams, is to say your business has to work for you, mm -hmm. without you. So I'm meeting you here 
saying it's a question of building a lifestyle and having a business that works for your lifestyle to allow you to get the lifestyle you want. But that asset that's going to keep working can also help you to build an empire. And then the question is, as you said, what is it that you want? Mm -hmm. But the point in the middle is to say, to get there, you need to think in terms of assets. And I'm coming back to our Four. differentiation yeah. between level one technician, level two manager, supervisor, level three entrepreneur, level four um, leader, more general. The point is, at what stage do you start thinking in terms of, I want to build an asset that is going to work for me as an entrepreneur, for other people as a business leader? Technically, if you say, I want to build an asset that is working for others, you are already on the path to be a leader in your mindset. Because yeah. if you say, my, my business is going to make email marketing so much easier for entrepreneurs, you are not thinking about yourself, you're thinking about helping an industry, right? You can apply that to whatever you're thinking, um, animal well-being, whatever. Um, but that's, that's a very strong point. To come back to the introduction, I said, There are four types. And there is one um, class of entrepreneur, let's say, that we are excluding from that, and that's the freelancers, right? It wasn't just a clickbait. There is something behind that. Why do I say that the freelancers are not included in either of those? It's because they can be at different levels. But it's difficult to know where they are. Usually when people say I'm a freelancer, It can be because they don't want to have a boss. It can be because they didn't find a job. It can be because they don't want to work with people. So in those cases, they would be in the technician kind of field, early stage. But after a few years, if they stay freelancers, it means that worst, best case scenario, they're going to become their own managers or the manager of a small team, but it's never going to go beyond that. Um, and if you look online um, at For look online for um, articles about successful freelancers, you will see that they reach a glass ceiling at some point because being a freelancer means I'm going to sell my time. I'm going to sell my skills. It doesn't mean I'm going to build an asset. And so it's difficult to put them in one category or another, but it's very easy to know that you can't put them in the entrepreneur logic because this is not the actual point for them and they are not in the leader uh, field anyway, uh, either. So if you are a freelancer and you describe yourself as an entrepreneur, there is a question you need to ask yourself. Are you really an entrepreneur? If you want to be an entrepreneur, please stop calling yourself a freelancer. Find a way to create value. Find a value proposition that you can use to say I'm an entrepreneur. But stop calling yourself a freelancer because it's counterproductive in that, in that kind of situation. Yeah. And, and if you are lying to yourself being an entrepreneur, you don't do the effort to bring the value up front. It's same. Don't call you an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. And again, as you said earlier, there is no bad or good answer. It's, a, it's just about personal feelings and, yeah. and feeling to okay you. About, about what you, what you want to achieve. But the point is there. Um, depending on what you want, being an entrepreneur means having a specific mindset that's here to solve a problem. And that's here to make sure that you have time in terms of lifestyle for yourself, not for just the clients. It means that you can think in terms of structuring that business so that, again, it is an asset that works for you. It means you're working on big building things that are going to be much bigger than you and that you can be proud of just because of the way they're going to become again without you. I think we're done. Okay. That's perfect. So thank you, Antoine, again. Pleasure. Guys, it was an interesting talk. So we wish you a great day and we we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Cheers.